Hey everyone, Jess here from Jessie on a Journey and Travel Blog Prosperity. Just want to give a quick welcome to my channel where we talk about all things growing your traffic, community, and income as a travel blogger. Building on that, today I want to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is growing an email list. This has always been extremely important. I've always been a huge proponent of growing an email list, but with all these crazy things going on with Google, the updates, the algorithm changes, as well as the future. Maybe you've seen the video that Google launched recently um, talking about their future plans with the search and AI. There are big changes coming and you need to make sure that you aren't fully 100% relying on Google. Yes, Google can still be an amazing source of traffic. I know for me, it is still very much so my biggest traffic driver to all three of my websites. But we can't sort of put all of our eggs in that basket. So specifically, we're going to talk about one of my favorite opt-in freebie ideas for going an email list, which is creating a resource library. Now, before we jump into the strategy, we'll be going over it step by step. I do want to invite you to grab my free travel blogger resource library. It includes 55 plus resources, all meant to help you grow your traffic community and income. I updated all of the time. I actually just added a new template that's going to help you launch a paid newsletter. There's an email marketing workbook, an affiliate marketing workbook. If you're still confused about your audience, I created a Mad Lib sheet to help you get to know your audience. There's a template for creating an SEO optimized blog post from scratch. Lots in there. I also have a workshop on monetization. So feel free to pause this video, go grab that. And the other neat thing is you'll actually see the strategy we're about to go over, how it actually works in real time. So on that note, let's dive in, starting with what a free resource library is and why you should create one. So a free resource library is a group of resources that are free that you give to your new subscribers in exchange for them joining your email list. And these resources should have some common theme that threads them together. You know, you're not going to have a resource library with a Pinterest resource, a resource for dog grooming, a resource for vegan cooking. Like there should be some type of theme and it should relate to your travel blog's mission. You should be helping your audience the same way you're helping them through your blog posts, maybe your YouTube videos, whatever you're creating content around, the resource library and your email list and your products and everything else you do should also be related to that. And the really neat thing about a resource library, well, there's a few, is A, it is really valuable. Instead of just saying, hey, here's one printable, here's one cheat sheet, you can say, I have all of these different resources that all have this common goal. You know, in this case, it is helping you grow your travel blogs, traffic community and income, but maybe your family travel or solo travel, you know, think about your niche and how you help people and you can create all these different resources that further help your audience. Now, the other big benefit of the resource library is you don't have to create an entire new kind of email marketing group and automation every time you create a new printable or resource. You can put them all in one place and just call out the ones that are appropriate when it makes sense, when it's relevant. And I will show visuals of that as we go along. So the first step with our strategy is to choose your objective with your email list or think about the objective you already have. Maybe you already have an email list that you're emailing. What types of emails are you sending them? What types of calls to action do you have in your emails? What products are you selling? This is really important because you want to make sure it's all cohesive. You want to make sure that the people that are grabbing your opt-in freebie, in this case, your resource library, are also going to be interested in your email topics, your calls to action that they'll actually do them, and that they'll purchase your products. So for example, I have, again, that free travel blogger resource library. Lots of different resources on there related to different traffic strategies, email marketing, monetization. Well, one email that I sent recently was create a blog profit plan in five steps. This kind of does a few things. So that's why I pulled it up as an example. I lay out a strategy for creating a, creating a profit plan, but I also pitch one of my products, my 30-day blog profit plan calendar. So it's all related. And I, I lay out the strategy. 
I know or I have a good idea that someone who grabbed my free resource library is interested in growing and monetizing a blog and that they would be interested in this email and potentially this product. So that's what you want to try to do. You want to make sure that it's all nice and cohesive. Now moving on to step number two of our strategy, you want to choose your resource library theme, the topic it covers, and how these resources help people. I kind of touched on that in the beginning, but what, you know, how are you going to group these all together? For me, in this example, I have the, the travel blogger resource library. I'm helping travel bloggers. You can kind of get a sense of the resources here. I also, because I segment my community, I also have a resource library for travelers that helps them go beyond the guidebook. That's kind of my idea behind that. And there's loads of different principles and planning worksheets and budget calculators and Google Maps and all different things I created that's going to help that audience. Now, keep in mind, if you're looking at this and like, wow, this is a lot of resources. Keep in mind, I've created this over time. It, this wasn't all created in a day. And we will talk about that as we go on. Moving on to step number three of our strategy, create your resource library assets. Now, I know this can seem like a monstrous task. So think about your most popular blog posts first, the ones already getting traffic and what resources would be great to highlight in those. This way you are getting eyes on your resource library right away because you always want to be thinking about the places that you already have eyes and what calls to action you could put there. I mean, side tip, at least once a month, I like to actually look at my most popular posts and make sure they have a call to action for an opt-in freebie. They have affiliate links and those important calls to action. Also think about recurring topics you cover because then there might be some type of resource or asset you can create that you can promote you know, across many different pieces of content. So for example, I often talk about content creation. So one of the resources that I created for the resource library was a blog post from scratch template. I can promote this in many different places and I do right here. I also, you know, I have a podcast, the Profitable Travel Blogger Podcast. And sometimes when I'm doing an episode, I mean, I would love to do this for every episode. Um, but I really like to sometimes just create a new cheat sheet or worksheet to go with new episodes. So I'll do that as well. And you can see here, this episode, at least at the time of me recording this YouTube video, this episode hasn't even come out yet. It's about creating paid itineraries as a travel blogger. And what I did was sometimes you don't even need to really create something from scratch. I added a client intake form template. What I did was I just grabbed my own um, client intake form from my paid itinerary planning service and threw it in the resource library. So sometimes these can just be emails and templates and things you're already using that you can put in there really simply. So think about that too. Okay, so now moving on to step number four, set up your tech. And I think this is where many people get confused, but it doesn't have to be super, you know, tricky. Let me show you really simply how to create this. First of all, I store all of my resources that I create in Google Drive. So, you know, those are the links. But what you do is you, you put all of these different resources behind a password protected page. So right in this visibility tab here, if you click password protected, it would give you the option to either turn that on or off and input the password that you would like to tell people to input. I recommend having this be something branded, something to do with either your brand name or maybe, you know, your tagline or something you say all the time or something to do with the resource library topic, but keep it, keep it on brand. Don't make it like Q45126. So then once someone inputs the password here, they'll be taken to the actual resource library page. Now I'm showing you this in the editing screen, just so you can see how I do this. I like to create these little graphics. I do it right in Canva. I put the name of the resource so that people can actually search for it on the page. People, you know, if, for a while I actually didn't have this text, 
even though it says free toolkit here or bundle or, you know, right here it says email templates. If people searched on the page, um, I think on a Mac, it's like command F or something for email templates. It's not going to come up unless the text is there. So that's why I put this here. I like to also organize it by, you know, topic or kind of what it is, branding and business planning, etc. But I also input the actual link of the doc or the video, whatever that resource is, I link it to the graphic. Now I use the Beaver Builder plugin to create this. I'll link that below the video as well with the other tools that I'm mentioning. If you just use a regular WordPress page, totally fine. You can still do this. You can use Gutenberg blocks. Um, you can still make it password protected. So you don't need Beaver Builder. I just think it it gives that that little extra professionalism kind of look. Um, and I use it. The Beaver Builder plugin has many different features. You could do countdown timers and all different types of things. So I do use it for my landing pages and sales pages. But if you you know just want to stick with WordPress and Gutenberg blocks, again, you can absolutely do that. Now, in order to get people to sign up, you're going to want to have some type of landing page. Here's the landing page I have also created on Beaver Builder. Um, you could have a form that you create using your email marketing platform of choice. You can also, something I like to do within my content is I'll create these sort of, I do them for all my different opt-in freebies these nice graphics, and then I put them in, you know, I can put them in emails, I can put them in blog posts and things like that. So you can get creative with how you want this to look, but just really make sure you are very much promoting this. You want to promote it everywhere, whether you're promoting the landing page, the sign-up form, the graphics here. This graphic would be linked to the sign-up form that you're using, by the way. So where it says get instant access, what I would do is I would upload this as, you know, an image. I mean, this is a video. I, I don't really upload videos to my blog, but let's say it's a blog post. I would upload this as an image to kind of keep it everything quick loading. And then I would link the image to my signup form. Now, the other piece of the tech that I want to mention, maybe you're actually thinking, okay, you created the resource library, you have this form or this page, you're getting people to join. How do they get the password and all this stuff in the welcome email, which you set up in your automation section of your email marketing platform? So you can see here is the link, the password. Um, I also had a, at least at this moment, these things change all the time, a tripwire attached to this. That's another kind of piece of the marketing funnel puzzle. But you want to have a welcome email. I also, you know, let people know who I am, who I can help and who I can't, what I believe. I really want to kind of welcome people into the community, give them a rundown and set the expectations. I also just a little tip. I like to have some calls to action, like check out some of my top content. You can also check out my podcast on my YouTube channel. These things are also related to growing and monetizing a travel blog. Um, and then I just, you know, have my recommended resources page, another kind of strategy for nurturing community and growing your affiliate income there. I'll link a guide in the description of this video. But this is my welcome email for this opt-in. Building on the idea of this welcome email, I highly recommend that you don't just stop with that one email, but that you create a full automated nurture sequence to nurture your new subscriber into your community, to show them that you know your stuff, that you stay front of mind for them, for your topic, that you know when they think about your topic, they think, oh, you come to mind. They want your help because you've already helped them in that nurture sequence. So a tip with this, and I will have a resource down below where I give you a template for an automated nurture sequence, but you can end this with a pitch to a product. And I recommend with that, that you make that product solve the same problem as your resource library or whatever your opt-in is. Again, so you're really attracting the people who would want to purchase your product and who would benefit from it. The other thing you could do is you could add a tripwire to the mix, to this funnel. 
you kind of saw that really quick in my welcome email, but a tripwire is just a limited time offer. And what would happen is someone would grab your opt-in freebie. They'd be taken to a thank you page where that offer would be there for them. And I'll put a guide to that too in the description of this video. I have had my podcast for quite a while. So a lot of the things I talk about, I do have actual guides for. So anything relevant, it'll be down below. And the last tip I want to leave you with, I mentioned this before, please make sure that you're not just creating this amazing free resource library and letting it sit there. You have to get the word out. Where do you have eyes? Where are you active? Your blog posts, especially going back to the ones already seeing traffic on um, Pinterest, you can create, create pins that go directly to your signup form for your resource library on social media. Maybe you collab with other bloggers to cross promote your opt-in freebies. Really get creative with this and make it known to everyone that you've created this amazing resource. All right, now I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you feel inspired and empowered to create a free resource library of your own that can help you grow your email list and your income because remember, it could be the start of a larger funnel. It can also, you know, your email list, when you're growing it, you can monetize it as well. You can have affiliate links, you can promote products. Um, you can also grow your traffic to blog posts and YouTube videos that have ads. So there's a lot of different ways to not only use your email list to grow your traffic and, and connect with your audience, but also to grow your income. Also, don't forget to grab my free travel blogger resource library that I have linked in the description of this video, 55 plus resources, all meant to help you grow your traffic community and income. And finally, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos sharing these strategies that can help you turn your blog into a profitable full-time business. Happy blogging. Thank you.